Hey everybody. Well, I got to spend a weekend full of children, um, my own and others. We had a double birthday party, um, including my son and one of my daughters, and some kids down the street, and uh, you know, friends, neighbors, that sort of thing. Um, and I found myself uh, a couple of times <laughs> counseling children uh, in their little temper tantrums. Uh, it was sort of mind-blowing how these children behave like narcissists and then I realized no 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 it's just narcissists behaving like normal children uh, it's scary that full-grown adults behave like these children that are like you know seven eight nine ten years old uh, it, was, it was unreal uh, I had to talk to my son and I had to talk to my neighbor's son um, so I'll talk about my neighbor's son first because he's not mine uh, we had all the kids in the backyard we have one of these uh, Costco uh, play fort type of things where it's got the slides on it and the swings and, and all that good stuff all the kids were running running around that you know the boys were being boys and uh, a couple of the girls were being girls so they wanted to water the plants so I turned on the water hose it has one of those little jet nozzle things on it and I put it on you know gentle shower you know the kind where it's like your shower head and they were gonna fill up this little water bucket well in the process of doing it my daughter is picks it up and she's four years old holding it trying to mess with it figure out how it works I'm standing close by with my beer along with several of the other guys doing our impression of King of the Hill uh, and when my daughter finally figures out how to work it she squeezes it and it sprays water and it hits this little boy who's like like 10 feet away and he just loses his shit and just starts screaming at the top of his lungs I'm not even going to do the impression, but he's just very clearly just wanting to draw attention to himself over some damn water. And I look over at the other guys, they sort of look back at me, I'm, we're just like, it's not my kid, your kid? No. No. Um, is there an adult here? Is there a, a parent of some kind? Is that we all just look at each other and um, <laughs> my neighbor down the street, he's there with his kids, right? He looks at me and he goes, let him walk it off. I was like, yeah, let him walk it off. Let him walk off the water. <laughs> so, so we, we just sit there holding our beers. All of us standing shoulder to shoulder. I'm like, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, watching this kid, Bobby, just increasingly, uh, acting out and then it, it comes to climax when he grabs a beach ball and stomps over to the fence with the beach ball and tries to throw the beach ball over the fence but it doesn't quite make it it just hits the the top part and like bounces right back into the yard and all three of us men at the same time go oh <laughs> almost but then he'd had enough of the outside, he realized he wasn't gonna get his attention. Goes stomping right through the middle of us, right? Like big balls on deck. And he goes storming into the house. <laughs> and after about 30, 45 seconds in the house, comes storming back out. I guess he didn't find whatever he was looking for inside either. Comes storming back out, sits down on the, the patio right behind all of us. It starts making uh, what can only be described as mooing. <laughs> and we all look at each other and I'm like, uh, all right, I, I got this. I got this. It's my house. I guess I'll take care of it. So I sat down with this kid. And I said, all right, man, why are you mad? Because the water, he goes, she shot me in the face and she did it on purpose. I saw her. 
I said, yeah, well, just, I said, no, man, accidents happen and you need to get over it. He goes, it wasn't an accident. It was on purpose. I said, just because you believe it, just because you believe something does not make it true. And now all three of us were all standing right here. We all saw what happened. It was an accident, which is why nobody's coming to help you. Because accidents happen and you need to learn to get over it. I said, the, the birthday party's still going to go on for two more hours before your parents pick you up. I said, I don't care how you spend your time here. You can either spend your time being miserable or you can spend it being happy. It don't make a difference to me and it doesn't make a difference to anybody else here. Now, do you want to spend two hours being miserable? Or do you want to spend two hours having fun? And he doesn't want to give an answer. I said, well, look at all the other children over there. You see what they're doing? They're having fun. I said, over here is where the misery is. Over there is where the fun is. I said, now, do you want to stay here and be miserable or go over there and have fun? Have fun? Good. Now, get off your ass and get over there and go have some fun. And he gets up and goes running over there playing with the kids as if nothing ever happened. It's amazing. My son, when I had picked him up, I guess it was on Friday, because it was President's Day weekend, it was early dismissal Friday. I'm divorced with his mother, so we have the before school care, after school care. Um, oh. Excuse me. At one of these, you know, little side schools that's uh, a combination daycare and before school care and after school care. Um, so I go and I pick him up after work. And uh, he's like, Dad, he, he, he like picks me up. I was like, did you have a good day at school? He goes, yeah, and it was early dismissal. And, and, and it was just torture today at after school care. I was like, oh, really? And he just keeps on and on about how after school care is torture. And it's just torture. And... And then he's, um, you know, telling me about how he's looking forward to the birthday party and um, how he wants, you know, he's looking forward to having time playing with his sisters and, and you know, just sort of just um, blowing smoke up my ass while also talking about how, how day, daycare, daycare, not after school care, daycare is torture. Um, and I, I got it. And I said, so let me get this straight. This is one of those situations where you tell me all the things you think I want to hear and you, you, you tell me all these nice things and then you casually vocalize your problems and sort of expecting that if you, if you say and do the things that you think will make me happy, then I should say and do the things that make you happy. And he's like, well, yeah. I was like, Life doesn't work like that, son. It Does, doesn't work like that. So first of all, I don't care how old you are, we're not getting rid of the after school care. Not for a long, long time. Because it's safe. Okay, the alternative is for you to ride a school bus home and sit in an empty house for several hours every single day with no adults there, period, in case there's an emergency. Not happening. End of story. It's not happening. Um, and then I went into a, a lecture about crime and burglars in general and how nothing paints a bigger target on the back of a child than to be a child walking home from school by themselves with a key letting themselves in the house because criminals have thought of that burglars are gonna watch school buses and watch kids get off the school buses and see who's got a key and who doesn't they've thought of that and so in, in no way is he ever going to be in that situation? Period. And then I had to further explain to him that you got to understand you're not in daycare, son. You're like 10 years old. You haven't been in daycare for ever. At least five years. I said, just because... Just because... Your before school care and after school care, just because they have a daycare program does not mean you're in daycare. No more than going to school, I said, just because you go to school, they have kindergarten there, does that make you a kindergartner? 
Well, no. It's like, okay then. Well, then your age doesn't mean... Just because you go to after-school care and there's a daycare there doesn't make you a daycare kid. Doesn't mean you're in daycare. And I'm willing to guess somebody probably said something laughing or poking fun at daycare and now you're all buttered about it. I said, but no more than going to school where there's a kindergarten makes you a kindergartner. It doesn't mean you're in daycare. It means you're safe. You know, in the story. You know, if, if you're unhappy with going to before school care and after school care, you're going to have to figure something out because that's not going away. We're not going to change that. You need to learn to be happy. Do whatever mental gymnastics it's going to take for you to be happy. Because uh, it, it ain't changing. Um, so, all this to say, man, it just it goes to show just how important it is to be in charge of your own happiness. This, these mentalities of, well, somebody needs to do something, uh, is ridiculous. Uh, it, it, it gets you nowhere. Uh, not only that, man, but, you know, it's, it's... You have to be in charge of your own happiness. You have to be your own boss. Uh, this notion of mentality of, I just want to be with somebody who makes me happy. Good luck with that. Uh, it's not going to work. Um, neither neither does the, the the mentality of being, you know, sacrificing for people and and uh, being a people pleaser is the word I'm looking for. You can't be a people pleaser. That's the concept of I do all these things. I do and say all these things that make you happy, and then you should be able to say and do all the things that make me happy. It doesn't work. There is no such thing as relationship equity. It's not like a. Yeah, they they have uh, they have the the phrase and saying pay it forward. You know, you you go and you buy your coffee and then you pay for the coffee for the person behind you. Uh, yeah, but that's not a model for life. Okay, it's not how people get through life. Uh, it just it, it isn't. It's not gonna work. You, you're gonna drive yourself crazy as you have been doing, uh, doing all the things for people and and doing what's asked of you, and then nobody does anything for you in return. And then you get all mad. Well, then stop doing things for people forever. You start just telling people, no, you're not going to do it. It's perfectly acceptable. You know, and that's the thing. In, in, in a lot of the other videos I talk about, normal people have the ability to accept no as an answer. If you tell people no and they can't deal with it, well, then they're, they're special. You know, regular people can handle being told no. How many times have you been told no? quite a bit and what happens you don't really pitch a fit or get over it so then why the hell do you feel guilty for telling somebody else no and then they pitch a fit it's not your problem it's their problem you know uh, you know happiness has to come from within you have to have the skill to be happy uh, no matter where you are or what you're doing or whatever the time of day you have to Nobody else is going to do it for you. If you think somebody else is going to make you happy, you're sorely mistaken. And if you expect that from people, then, you know, uh, if you expect people to make you happy, like, damn, like, that that falls into the category of responsibility. You're making other people responsible, responsible for you. You know, your feelings are not somebody else's responsibility. They're yours. Nobody else's. And your feelings are not somebody else's responsibility. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're dealing with some hard times, understand it's hard. Take the time you need, and then pull yourself up by the bootstraps and get your own self up and your own self out, because nobody else is going to want to do it for you. Not without expecting something in return, and that's just a toxic psychology. You don't do it. Thank you very much for listening. Please like, comment, or share, and I'll see you on the next video.